welcome back again for the uh, for the next hour of this uh, of this uh, text so we will uh, move forward so we have to look at this uh, particular uh, thing a little more 50th verse i think a little more uh, immersion in that is warranted na nishedhati doshadhiya meaning doshadhi and gunadhi these are two kinds of demeanors doshadhi is the one that is always questioning critical why this why that how come distrustful that is doshadhi critical of oneself and then critical of so there is a critical lens distrustful lens this is on one end of the continuum everybody knows what this is i don't need to explain because everybody has this and in fact as i said this being sick of this is what brings one to vedanta shastra all right and then there is gunadhi gunadhi means the guna buddhi guna buddhi means that with uh, because of which i everything looks wonderful and so so which one should i adopt should i be a doshadhi or should i be a gunadhi uh, well you should be neither this is the idea because each one is, is not objective so there are two kinds of uh, what is that called adhyasa adhyasa means a superimposition a projection of one's own desires prejudices and preferences and that prejudice and preference is powerfully put on the universe so when the prejudices are superimposed on everything that i look at everything looks very suspicious so and this everybody has experienced when one is in a bad mood anything you see you, you don't feel like smiling you don't feel like looking at and uh, and everything looks gloomy because one's demeanor is not very happy everything looks gloomy everything looks upsetting everything looks uh, painful this is what it is number one. number 2 they then the on the other side let's say uh, what is that somebody uh, is in a good mood they have quote and quote fallen in love <laughs> there's one song also i am on the top of the world <laughs> because you are in my life that's not how the lyrics go but you get the idea you know i'm on the top of the world is there that is part of the lyrics but the rest of it i'm just extrapolating so i'm on the top of the world why because of you and how long will this last the next two three months <laughs> bas that's it after that back to doshadhi back to criticizing everything everybody when all the time so this is the yo yo life uh, one time uh, praising to the skies certain things and people and situations sometimes the world looks wonderful and sometimes the world looks gloomy dreary both of these are personal projections one is called the, the positive projection where i see more than what there is in a situation in a person in an event is called shobhana adhyasa adhyasa projection shobhana beautiful so i have a beautiful projection that's why i think that oh if i get this particular object as a birthday present uh, because i don't want to buy it for myself i want to somebody else to buy it for me it's rather expensive if i get it as a birthday present my life will be so different similarly if i get this particular title my life will be great if i get that job my life will be completely transformed and if i get this person in my life that i really really want to have then my life will look very different i am you know i am completely satisfied if i get this 
this is a dangerous uh, superimposition. It comes from a subjective filter. That's why it is called falling in love, where the word falling is operative. Yeah. <laughs> falling means you have no control here. Yeah, despite your best intentions, this something is happening and you are not in control. What a travesty. So sad. So this is, and, and people get very thrilled about this because people want drama in their lives. No matter how many times I say, please drop the D, have Rama in your life. Don't have drama. <laughs> Don't be a drama king. Don't be a drama queen. Let the drama quotient go down. In fact, it's very peaceful because you have a nice level life. No, no, no. I want the ups and downs. I want the thrills. If you want thrills, go to an amusement park, okay? Ride the roller coaster and come back. That's easy. Yeah, that's all just $10, 20 You go ride, ride the roller coaster, have an ice cream after the roller coaster, okay? Not before. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then come back. Finish. But what is this? You don't make your own life a roller coaster. But this is what it is, gunadhi and doshadhi. Both of them are just tantamount to making the life a roller coaster because when I have a positive projection, that means that I have put all, everything in one basket. Everything I have put in one basket and then of course, uh, that person uh, is, I'm seeing more in that situation, in that person, in that object than what is there. It is looking extra nice to me. It is looking extra, extra nice to me. Why? It is looking extra nice to me because I have, I desperately need some hope and I have seen something which my wishful thinking has got, I have painted that person with my own wishful thinking, with the golden paint of my own wishful thinking. Is this or not a set for set up for disappointment? Yes, it is. Then on the other hand, there are certain things that scare me in life. There are certain things I'm distrustful of because of my past. There are certain things that I don't know how to maneuver in life. There are certain things that remind me of unpleasant situations and people. And of those kinds of things, I'm, uh, I am extremely distrustful because I find them annoying or triggering. So I try to stay away from them. This is all based on my own prejudices. So when I paint the world with the paint of my own prejudices, everything looks dull and gray. So when I paint a situation, a person, an event or an object with the dull paint of my own prejudices, then what will happen? Then also I'm not seeing objectively. The person may be a fine person, but I'm not able to see that because they look like somebody who hurt me in the past. They look like they resemble the primary scaregiver, <laughs> not caregiver, scaregiver. <laughs> you put an S in front of it. So therefore, oh, no, 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 I can't go with this person. This is the idea. And so therefore, I avoid certain things and people and situation in life. And then I accept and I'm much more favorable for certain things and situation and people in my life. And what are these people? They are neither good nor bad. They are neither wonderful nor terrible. They are objectively speaking, they may be a mix of both. But I'm unable to see that because I have painted them with my own prejudices. And in the light of the knowledge, the light of the study of the Vedanta, these prejudices drop. They drop. They drop, 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 drop. And when they drop, clarity comes. You have more of a samadarsh, the, you know, the, you are a samadarshi. Samaloshtashma kanchanaha, the Bhagavad Gita says. The one uh, who, who looks upon everything in the same manner. Samaloshtashma kanchanaha. Loshta, a lump of clay. Ashma, some uh, metal, iron or something like that, stone. Ashma, I think is stone, yeah. And then um, kanchana, gold. Same view for all of them. Same view for all. Vidya vinaya sampanne 
ब्राह्मणो गविहस्तिनि शुनिचैव श्वपाके च पंडिता समदर्शिनः देयर इज अ नाइस वर्ड्स सो इक्विप्ड बाय विद्या विद्या मींस सेल्फ नॉलेज एंड देन विनया विद्या ब्रिंग्स इन ह्यूमिलिटी द मोर यू नो द लेस यू नो यू नो बिकॉज द मोर यू नो द मोर यू नो यू डोंट नो सो दैट ब्रिंग्स इन ह्यूमिलिटी वन इज नॉट अ शो ऑफ सो इक्विप्ड बाय अडोर्ड बाय विद्या एंड विनया uh adorned by uh, knowledge and humility then uh, this pandita is these pandits the people who know this uh, uh, so they are they they have equanimity in how they approach the things of the world nothing bedazzles them and nothing at the outset disappoints them they all take everything in their stride and they are objective so the sum of the uh, objectivity how how they are objective is given through certain examples so with ref, uh, you know with reference to the brahmana brahmane and we, brahmana means the one who evokes pleasant associations because the brahmana is not bothering anybody he is studying and is just eking out a living doing puja etc and very harmless person so oh bichara poor thing going about his <laughs> his or her life so it's a pleasant association generally uh, you know gavi with reference to the uh, cow cow again a very peaceful thing nobody runs away from a cow cow will run away from you <laughs> but uh, you don't run away from the cow because it is not uh, it is generally not a harmful creature unless it has some uh, unless it is under duress or unless you have scared it in some way it is so the cow also you say oh how sweet how nice there's a favorable feeling and then hasti means uh, elephant elephant also very auspicious favorable harmless unless you come under its foot don't do that <laughs> then then it is harmful but otherwise it's harmless totally harmless so it is easy to be favorable towards all these you know but then what about when you see unfavorable things collectively unfavorable things uh, you know shuni dog what kind of dog not a nice uh, dog which is coming in the westminster dog show not kind that kind of dog what kind of dog a mongrel a road side three legged dog uh, you know well, the one leg was lost in an accident and then it has uh, uh, some kind of a disease mange and then it is it is all its hair is matted and then it has all kinds of uh, problems that kind of a dog if you see immediately do you recoil not your own dog not the kind of dog that is were nicely clipped and groomed and uh, uh, sprayed with uh, some nice hair gel and then trotted out in the westminster dog show that is easy to love this is another kind of dog completely different dog and then then what then you you, you just recoil from that kind of a dog because it is dirty and then you don't know what to do with it and and then uh and then you say oh no it's wagging its tail oh no it's coming near me help <laughs> let me run away <laughs> and then then if the dog evokes these kinds of things what about the dog eater shwapak means dog cooker the one who cooks the dogs and eats this because dogs generally are not eaten some places in uh, i think they are eaten in some places in southeast asia uh, but generally people don't eat dogs but uh, here the dog eater what kind of grina grina means what kind of uh, just this disgust and revulsion that kind of a person creates oh my god can't you find something else to eat why do you have to eat a dog come on so shuni chaiva shwapake cha so regardless of whoever greets them which whatever animal whatever kind of uh, person greets them panditaha samadarshinah so these these people are all they have equanimity and so this equanimity of vision is is what is talked about here you know so this is the because they know that the non equanimity of vision are all these notions these notions of favorable unfavorable good bad all these things uh, uh, you know avidya avidyatmakam Uh, 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 you know because it is a product of ignorance
And so they don't go by that at all. Next one. Bhutan kimapi namanute bhavi chakin chan na chintyan tataha pashyatina puro vartyapi vastu samastartha samarasakopi. So, bhutan kimapi namanute. Manute means thinks, does not think of the past. Does not, the past does not feature in, in the life of a yogi. There is no past. The one who has made repast of the past, that is the kind of yogi we are talking about. Why? How? How is this possible? Because what the, uh, the Shastra says that one is timeless. That is the vision of the Shastra. You are timeless. And if you are timeless, what are you doing dancing with the past? <laughs> Oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had studied Vedanta when I was five. And then by now I would have had self-knowledge. Maybe even a following. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of a, this kind of a thinking. So strange. And so this is the thinking that one has. And then, uh, so this kind of a thinking is not uh, is not indulged in the bhut for the past postponed. In fact, when you think of the past, when do you think of it? Now, in the present. So where is the past? Because you are really regurgitating it in the present. And then when you think about the future, bhavi means future. So no, is not the future is not a cause for worry. Why is the future not a cause for worry? The future is not a cause for worry because the future is its um, is is that which is a series of presents. A series of presents make the future, and then when the future comes, what is it? It is the present. <laughs> so there is no such thing called future. It is the spoof of time. We saw this in the study of this text called Saddarshanam Ramana Maharshi. Bhutam cha bhavishyat cha bhavat svakale. And then uh, tad vartamanam vihaya uh, hasya na kimsyat jag, uh, gatabhavi charcha vinaika samkhyam gananaiva gana loke. Isn't it laughable? Ramana Maharshi says. Isn't it totally, totally hilarious? What is hilarious is a group of mathematicians in a, in a convention of, of the mathematics conference. They are all seriously discussing an equation. And then they are not able to solve the equation. Why? Because they, they forgot to use the number one. <laughs> so without the number, the numeral one, they are trying to solve a big equation. Hasya na kimsyat. Isn't it funny? So similarly, the, just like uh, the person trying to talk about the past and the future without remaining and understanding oneself as the truth, as the content of the present, as the truth of the present. So this is the same idea that is kept here. Bhavi na kinchan chintyantataha and then pashyati na purovarti api. So then what about the present? So then I should catch hold of the present, right? I should just be with the present. No. The present is you. You don't catch hold of yourself because you are not an object that is to be caught hold of. You cannot catch hold of the present because it is you. So that which happens in the present also escapes the jnani because the happening is not away from him or her and that uh, the, the jnani is not away from the event. The jnani is timeless. So time uh, collapses into the jnani, emerges from the jnani, sustained by the jnani. Time is non-separate from, from the jnani. The jnani is not separate from time. The, the, the time is... Is is uh, is something which is non-separate from the from the yogi, but the yogi is not subject to time. Yogi is timeless. That is the idea. Oh, but the yogi also dies. Body of the yogi dies. Yogi is timeless. That which was inhabiting the yogi, that indweller, that is timeless. 
and that is what one has to understand. There is no time uh, involved in this at all. So this is the this is the idea. Next one. Nigrihita Kilakaranaha Nimrishta Shesha Vishayeha Vishayeha Tripte Tripte Manuttamasi Mam Praptaf Pariatiti Kopi Yativariaha Yativariaha Kopi Pariatati. So some yogi roams around. How? And there are three. Uh, kinds of uh, uh, adjectives to how uh, adverbs, adjectives to how the yogi um, uh, is. What is this kind of a yogi who who roams around? So they they are not uh, you know they are they are not adjectives really. They are adjectives that qualify the yogi. So the yogi is such and such. Who is the yogi? Nigrihit akhila karana. Akhila samastam. Akhilam means samastam. Samastha means all, total. So, Nigrihita means the one who has full say over the, uh, over the sense organs and the organs of action. The one who has, one who is not swayed by the mind, swayed by the senses. And this is how it is in this time of, a, you know, in this time of multitasking and so many things to do. So one starts to say, oh, I'll, I, will, I need to now respond to all my emails. And then, oh, let me look what's happening in the world. <laughs> oh, and then, then you just open another uh, um, application to see what is happening there. And then that leads you to somewhere else. There, there it says, oh, here is the recipe for chocolate cake. Oh, chocolate cake. I want chocolate cake. Well, let's see which shop will be open. And when I'll have it alone, having it alone is very boring. I should call up a friend and then I should make a date. Then if I don't call now, nobody will be available. So let me call right now. And then you take the phone, you try to call and then what? And then all the email mails and all the work that you set out to do is just gone, forgotten. Oh, I'll do them some other day. Some other day is also not any better. So then when we talk of the organs, uh, or the sense organs and the organs of action, both of them are there. And uh, both of them are involved. So the organs of action means the legs have a mind of their own and they start running towards the object of, the, of desire. And the hands also go reach for something like this. So the organs of actions are first trained to sit still. So Yukta Cheshtaha, the, the Bhagavad Gita describes the person called Yukta Cheshtaha. Yukta Cheshtaha means the person who has uh, appropriate movements, not unnecessary movements, where the uh, karmendriyas are under one's management. And the sense organs are also under one's management. One doesn't just go where the mind takes you because otherwise uh, the sankalpa, every sankalpa uh, is in the danger of becoming very, very fickle. Everything is very fickle. Now this, now that, I'll go here, I'll go there and I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. Uh, and so one is not able to pursue carefully what the, what the matter is. What the matter is. Okay. One is not able to pursue carefully what the matter is. Then, uh, so then, uh, the, uh, so the one who has a say over the sense organs, who can manage the sense organs and the organs of actions, they don't run away and then take this person, abduct this person and take them along with them. Meaning, with regard to the sense objects, there is, there is a, there is a restraint. One is not always uh, being under the spell of various things, objects of delight, and, and one is not running away either from the objects of distrust and disgust. One is simply is. That is the idea. So, nigrihita akhila karanaha. So, this is actually, these are words that describe the jnani. So, for the one, uh, the one for whom all the organs of action and the sense organs are nicely uh, managed. That is the idea. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, we have a parallel for this. And that parallel, we, I think it is there in the second chapter. Kurmongani Sarvashaha. 
so just like uh, there, there is a nice uh, metaphor uh, of the tortoise when when the tortoise you know is startled what does it do it withdraws its organs into its shell so it's not that the yogi is startled that's not the idea but the uh, the the uh, the thing is uh, the the uh, the metaphor or the example is limited here it's just about the uh, the ability to retract the sense organs and the organs of action at will that is the idea at will one is able to retract the organs and the, the organs of action and the sense organs just like the um, the uh, turtle or the tortoise is able to retract its withdraw its limbs unto oneself unto itself that is a, a hallmark of the jnani so all the uh, all the sense organs and the organs of action the jnani is able to withdraw unto oneself and not really the heart is not given away to something over there and <laughs> the eyes are not roaming around somewhere else uh, you know wandering eyes are not there wandering mind is not there wandering heart is not there everything is right here right now fully present without an agenda that's the idea how is one able to tame the sense organs because they the they, they, they are not having an agenda they, they are not wanting to pursue the sense object or anything like that they are not having any agenda other than just to be and uh, and why is that that is the result of vedanta gnanam that is the result of vedanta this is what it is so then that's the first that is the first uh, you know first qualification uh, here and that is the that is the ascetic here then nimrishta nishchayena you know mrishtaha ashesha vishaya iha 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 means desire Iha, desire, and then nimrishta means wiped out, wiped out, swept up away, mopped up, ashesha, without any residue. <laughs> the, the, the buddhi is clean, sparkling clean, wiped out of any residue of desires. So the jnani is one for whom whose buddhi is wiped out of any uh, residue of desires. There is no desire, there is no agenda. Give me this, give me that, I want this, I want that, I wish for this, I wish it was that. No regret, no agenda, nothing. And then, triptim uh, anuttama simam praptaha. So therefore, the one who has gained praptaha the one who is the master of the one who has gained what anuttama simam uh, triptim uh, triptim contentment the contentment beyond measure the one who has contentment be beyond measure that is the kind of yati we are discussing in this in this particular atma vidya vilasa next one Santyajati no papannam na sampanna na sampannan chavan chatikwapi swasthashete yatirad antara antara anubhavanne kaha. So Santyajati na upapannam na upapannam upapannam means that which comes. Santyajati does not give up. That which comes is just taken. And that includes prarabdha karma. Meaning anything because of karma which comes, the, the yati takes, uh, takes in, the, in his or her stride. The ascetic takes in, the, in stride, whatever comes. If something favorable comes, well and good. Agate svagatam, okay, welcome. And if it goes away, bye-bye. No problem at all. And uh, this is the kind of the uh, demeanor. In the Bhagavad Gita also we have uh, in, in the 12th chapter the same kinds of things you will find. You will find a mini Atma Vidya 
uh, Vilasa from verses 14 to 20 in the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. You will find all these qualities. Yona dveshti na kankshati, na khrishyati, uh, and you know, uh, the, na shochati, na khrishyati, na shochati, does not rejoice, does not repent, and then na dveshti, does not hate, na kankshati, does not expect something to come. That is the idea and the same thing, all the, from 14 to 20, you will have a small gist of everything that is being talked here in, uh, in um, 60 odd verses. So, Santyajati na upapannam, whatever has been gained does not, give, does not say, oh, I don't want, I'm away from all this, I am a yogi and I shouldn't have this. No, there is one story. And I have not, never understood this story. I think it is, says more about the student than about the guru. It's a guru-shishya story. So the shishya uh, wanted to test the guru, the disciple. And so the disciple put some gold coins under the guru's bed and thought that if the guru spends a sleepless night, that means the guru is a real guru because the guru is rejecting gold. This is just the Shishya's projection. Why should the Guru reject gold? <laughs> it's just one more metal. <laughs> Why should the, the, the Guru is not holding gold? Neither is the Guru rejecting gold. But this is the same idea. It is this funny ideas people have. So the Shishya had a projection that if my Guru is a real Guru, he will reject gold. So the Guru wakes up and the Shishya looks, Oh, are the eyes red? <laughs> is the Guru not slept very well? And then, so now, as the in terms of the answer of the Guru, we can have two scenarios. One scenario, let's say the Guru had some indigestion because he, he did not eat properly or something was bothering him. He has uh, acid in the stomach, so he did not sleep well. So then he could have said, no, I slept terribly. And the Shishya goes away happy. Oh, my Guru is the true Guru, <laughs> without really inquiring into why the Guru did not sleep well. Or we could have scenario number two. The Guru said, I slept like a log. That means what? The Shishya is disappointed and goes away. Of course, after retrieving the gold coins back. <laughs> so, the Shishya goes away disappointed. But silly Shishya, really. Because either of those, these are not the qualifications of the teacher. So, if somebody gives the Guru gold coins, I mean, they will say, okay, fine, keep it. You know, they may not, there is no, oh, no, 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 I'm supposed to not be a, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to not be attached. That means you're attached. If you say, I'm not attached, I should stay away from all this. That means you're afraid that you will come under the spell and go gambling or something like that with those coins. That's what, that's the idea. So here, there is no, uh, so whatever comes, let it come. Honor comes, let it come. Dishonor comes, let it come. Prarabdha karma. The karma that is there for, to be uh, exhausted in this body, when good karma comes, good food comes, let it come. Bad food comes or no food comes, that is also okay, let it come. That is how the uh, yati lives. So, na asampannam cha vanchati. Asampannam means not gained. Uh, so, the one who doesn't have something the, the the sage is not longing oh look at the other guru so many followers and hardly any people come to me and then oh look at that one has such a huge ashram what's wrong with me why i don't have this this kind of a thing is not there this kind of a thing is not there at all not even a lesha not even a residue of this kind of a thing is there so yona dveshti nakankshati the bhagavad gita says shubha shubha parityagi uh, meaning the uh, all idea of this is auspicious this is inauspicious those notions are given up and uh, and then swastashete that's why calmly <laughs> sleeps where does the Yatirat, the king of Yati sleeps? Um, where the, does, does the Yatirat sleep? Where does the king of uh, sages sleep? Antara, um, anta, uh, antaram, antaram anandam anubhavan. Antaram anandam anubhavan ekaha. So, this, uh, this 
Yatirad, the king of the sages, sleeps uh, enjoying the inner uh, inner ananda. Inner ananda means it is uh, ananda which comes out also. There is, there is no need to say inner except here they want to make a distinction between things outside which one depends on for one's ananda whereas one's own ananda that is that is the, the result of the study of Vedanta. That is the idea. I think we have covered all this. Then... Kama pivimalam padavim asadhyananda sam vidum nidram aste bhikshuka ekaha viharan mukta bandhana swairam swairam at will aste remains remains you know and then uh, uh, remains at will how nirmukta bandhaha remains Remains how viharan remains moving around. Viharan aste that that goes together. Viharan aste remains moving around. Ekaha uh, uh, any uh, ekaha bhikshukaha one uh, mendicant one mendicant who lives on arms uh, moves around remains moving around. How uh, nirmukta vinirmukta bandhaha free of all bondage naturally. Because if one is not running after what one wants, half the life goes in running after one what one wants. And then the other half the life goes in getting rid of what one doesn't want, running away from what one doesn't want. No wonder one is exhausted. You ask anybody these days, how are you? I just am so tired. I'm just so tired. Of, no, I think they never say wonderful. I'm just so tired. I'm kind of tired. And then, oh, when can I become retired? Because I'm already tired. <laughs> Even before one is retired, one is tired. And why? Because this is useless running around. Just running, running, running. Get this, get this, get this. And then get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. What is this madness? But this is this is what it is. So, the, without that, vinir bhuktaha. Bandha muktaha. So, uh, so, so then, uh, so, so mukta bandhanaha. So, free, this yati is free of all notion of bondage. There is no bondage at all. Uh, free. And uh, uh, one is not bound to have certain things. One is not get, trying to get rid of certain other things. And then one is not trying to have, uh, keep certain things that one already has. And one is not trying to keep at bay what one doesn't have and what one doesn't want. Like wrinkles, gray hair, etc. One is not trying to keep at bay. I want to look young and I want to be like this and all these things. And so since that pressure is not there, naturally one moves around freely. And there is no, uh, there is no pressure. Oh, I have to, it's just like, you know, when one is driving you know, from place to place. So you have to make sure that uh, you reach the hotel <laughs> by night. There is a pressure. Oh, I have to finish driving. So let's see how many miles you calculate. Okay, let us look at Google. See where is the hotel? Which hotel? Okay, nice hotel it should be. And it should have, it should have all my creature comforts. It should have good food. It should have nice uh, ambience. And it should have a good bed. And it should be clean. Okay, this town has this particular chain of hotels I like. And so this town is four or five hours away and darkness is six hours away. Oh, perfect. So this is how one makes all these things. I, I better book the hotel now itself. <laughs> because if I don't book, what if the rooms are taken? So much pressure, so much anxiety. And let's say the rooms are taken, you booked. Either you didn't get them on the phone and you went there and the rooms were taken or you found out beforehand the rooms were taken. Oh, now I have to find something else. Oh, the other hotels are terrible and they are bad and I don't want to stay anywhere and I'll not have a good night and then tomorrow I won't be able to drive. Look at all these things. All this pressure, so much pressure one puts oneself into, uh, under. But for the yati, oh... <laughs> I am carrying my pillow. Where? Right here. The shoulder is the pillow. The arm is the pillow. 
I have a nice down soft pillow, which is my arm. And then what? I, I am carrying my duvet. What? It is this guy. It is carrying itself. And my bed is all rolled up, rolled out for me. What? It is Mother Earth is my bed. It is already rolled out for me. And everything is right there. So where? So it's just like, you know, uh, it's just like animals. Animals don't, you know, you see the animals also migrate. In South Africa, they go. And the carnivores go after the herbivores because the zebra and the um, elephant and the, and all the buffaloes and all migrate in search of water. And the the cats, the big cats, the cheetahs, the uh, the cheetahs and the lions and the tigers and the jaguars, they also migrate because lunch is going, dinner is going. <laughs> they also migrate. <laughs> So when they at night they sleep wherever it there is they just find a general wooded area they sleep okay they may not sleep on the ground if they have a choice there is a little patch of grass they sleep they, they don't book they don't make a reservation and the bird also build, builds its nest like that it doesn't say I'm going to migrate anyway why should I invest in this nest no it will build a nice nest like the weaver bird's nest, so beautiful it is. And it is lined with the softest of fur. Where? In the bedroom. And in the living room, there is a nice couch. <laughs> and in the, in, the, in the dining room, there are nice chairs and tables and everything. Wonderful nest. Then the young ones, it lays the eggs. And the young ones, it ha the, they hatch. And it feeds them and raises them. It teaches them to fly. Then they fly away. And the, and the next migration season comes. And then what? It doesn't say, I think I should rent out this condo. <laughs> Two-story condo. <laughs> yeah. I should give it a paint job and stage it nicely. And then I should rent it out. It's prime real estate. Tree view. <laughs> leaf view. Mountain view. <laughs> it, it doesn't say that. It just says, oh, our Bhagavan has given me the ability to make another ne nest the next next year. I don't need to rent out this nest because I'm not worried about a nest egg. That's what it is. I'm not worried about having something. No, I can let go because I can build this again. And so it will, and uh, you know, it will just even prime time real estate nest is just abandoned for us to admire and see and find out how the weaver bird builds it to find out how intricate it is. It becomes, it is, it is given, it is dedicated for the cause of science, botany, <laughs> biology, zoology. It is just, it is, it is given for that. And it goes. It doesn't have a care in the world. It doesn't say, oh, let me take out my cell phone. Did, you, did they pay rent? The other bird. Cheap, cheap, cheap. You need to pay rent. You are so cheap. You need to pay rent. It doesn't say that. No care in the world. Like this, the yati is part of this natural law. Awake, alive, not animalistic, not in instinctual. Very much, uh, uh, you know, the buddhi is there, the mind is there, but it is it is given to the highest cause. That is uniting with the truth of oneself as, as whole, as free from all limitations. So therefore, there is no care. There is no worry about what's going to happen. There are no, uh, nothing to, nothing to guard. And this is what the Kathopanishad also says, that there is nothing at all to guard. There is nothing to protect. Uh, this is what it says. There's nothing to protect, there's nothing to hide. And so therefore, the um, free of all bonds. So Kamapi Vimalam Padavim Asadya. So how does this uh, how, how does this uh, how does this how does this sage manage to be free of bonds? Kamapim Kamapi Vimalam Padavim gaining the status. What is that status? The status is the uh, the, 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 the the status is called the um, uh, self knowledge. That is the status. So that, that limitless knowledge of oneself is the status. So having gained that, 
Badavim Asadya having gained Vimala. Vimala means that is pure and free of all guilt, hurt, pain, sorrow, papa, punya, nothing. It is just a, a limitless understanding of oneself. Having gained that, then Ananda Samvid Unnidra. So Samvid is Atma. So that Atmananda having gained, having gained that, Unnidra means free of the stupor of Atma Agyan. Atma Agyanam is, is described as the stupor. Freed of the stupor of Atma Agnanam. So this uh, Ut, the, the, the Upasarga, the prefix called Ut means like kind of a uprooting. You know? So freed of that stupor, freed of Nidra, doesn't mean um, insomniac, no. Always ever alert to the truth of oneself, not in the stupor of self-ignorance, freed of the stupor of self-ignorance, the yogi moves around, remains moving around freely. Then the next one. Vastu nyastamita khila vishva vihare vilina manaha rajati parana pekshaha raja khila vitaragana vitaragana So Vitaragana Raja Akhila Vitaragana Raja Rajati. The king shines. Rajat. Rajate Rajati. The king shines. Who is the king? The king among all the people who are who have freed themselves from Raga and Dvesha. So the Vitaragana means. Vitaraga. Vitaraga uh, this is also from this, this thing. Vitaraga bhayakrodha. Uh, you know, sthitadhihi munihi uchyate. This is also in there in the Bhagavad Gita. The word Vitaraga. Vitaraga bhayakrodha. Vitaraga means, Vita means from which, from whom all Raga and Dvesha and in the Bhagavad Gita, fear and the krodha, anger have departed. So who is that? The person who is free. So the person who is free. So if you bring a whole thousands of such people who are free of their ragadveshas, this one that is being described is, is the king of all of them. Shines. Has excelled all of them. Meaning one in a thousand of renunciants who have let go of strong preferences and let go of strong prejudices. That is the person so then, uh, Rajate, how Rajate means shines, how para, para anapekshaha, yeah, you know, anapekshaha, anapekshaha means uh, apeksha na vidyate, yes, yes, so, so far the one there is no expectation, I want this, I'll get this, etc. Uh, you know, para anapekshaha means not dependent on any, anyone else, not dependent on anyone. Para is anyone else. So not depend on anapekshaha. Uh, this again the word anapekshaha is also describing the uh, jnani uh, in the Bhagavad Gita. Anapekshaha shuchir dakshaha udasinaha gatavyataha. Like this that, that the word also comes there. So anapekshaha uh, free from expectations of others. That as soon as you see somebody else, you know, then immediately some attachment, uh, not attachment, some expectation comes. Oh, they are coming. Okay, what can I make them do for me? <laughs> no. Oh, what can I do? What can I, how can they help me? How can they take care of me? How, how can I make use of them in the future? Not that I may, you know, not that I am some kind of a mean person. I will also be of help to them. But first I want to know how will they be of use to me. The sage does not think like that. Somebody asked uh, uh, my guru, Pujya Swamiji, what is the difference between you and me? A very bold question. <laughs> very bold question. And Swamiji said, well, I don't know about who you are or what you are because it was the first time Swamiji was meeting him. So then he said, but I know myself and whenever I see somebody for the first time, 
I just tell my, you know, the first thought that occurs to me is, how can I be of use to this person? Rather than, how can this person be of use to me? So this is what is called para, paranapekshaha. Paranapekshaha. Anapekshaha means not really dependent upon someone else. Nobody else is there to, to have this, uh, you know, nobody else is there. Uh, it's not that they are not there, but they are not really targeted as a possible place of wish fulfillment. That is not there, including Bhagavan. No, you know, they are not uh, really looking for wishes to be fulfilled because those wishes, uh, you know, are already fulfilled. How? By the truth of knowing themselves. So, uh, how did this happen? Because the person is vilina manaha. Vilina manaha uh, means the one whose mind is absorbed. One whose mind is absorbed. Vilina, absorbed. Absorbed, resolved. So, has resolved. Where? Vastu. Uh, 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 so, Vastu Nyastam. Uh, 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 sorry, Vastuni Astam uh, uh, Astamita Akhila Vishwa Vihare Vilina Manaha. So, Vastuni Astam Akhila Vishwa Vihare. So, Vastuni means with reference to all kinds of worldly things. Vastu, things in the world. So, things in the world, astamita, astamita means that, uh, you know, that, that the, uh, it, it has come to a standstill. The sun has set on the desire for these kinds of vastus. So, Vishwa Vihare means that the, uh, this, uh, this is the way of the world. Vishwa Vihara means the, all the kinds of worldly activities and the objects. That become uh, 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 that become the center of all these activities. All of them have just you know resolved. So Vishwa Vihare. So then uh, the, the 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 person the, the mind is merged in what in that in which all the things in the world have resolved, and then in all the uh, the activities of the world has resolved that reality in which the sage is absorbed. That is the sage that is being described here. The sage who is being described is immersed the, their mind and their very being in that reality that is free of object, free of subject and free of any interaction between object and subject. That is the idea. Free of object, subject, differences. Free of uh, all wants. This is different from me. That is something I want. That's something somebody else wants. And nothing is there like that. And so the, the truth of the object is me and the truth of the subject is me. The content of the object is I as Brahman and the content of the, the subject is also I as Brahman. And here where here is where the mind is absorbed. The mind is that absorbed in that indescribable reality which is the truth of the subject and the object without becoming a, a either. Okay, yeah. So, this seems like a good place to stop because we have studied a lot this morning. And so, we will uh, come back again uh, uh, 6 o'clock Indian time, whatever else your time is. Uh, 4.30 Western USA and then what? Uh, 7.30 I think in the East Coast. All right. So the, uh, then I will see you there. We will have the last session at that time. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachyate Pur Nasya Pur Namadhaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you.